Sutra is the consciousness produced because of the eyes, such that the eyes are its realm, or is it produced because of form, such that form is its realm? Commentary: As to this consciousness, which is produced when the six organs match up with the six defiling objects, is the consciousness produced because of the eyes, such that the eyes are its realm? Is it because of the eyes that consciousness is produced, and does it take the eyes as its boundaries, or is it produced because of form, such that form is its realm? Is it because of the defiling objects of form that the eye consciousness is produced, and does it take the defiling objects of form as its boundary? Sutra, Ananda, if it were produced because of the eyes. Then, in the absence of emptiness and form, it would not be able to make distinctions. And so, even if you had a consciousness, what use would it be? Commentary: Ananda, if it were produced because of the eyes, Ananda, if it were because of the eyes that the eye consciousness was produced, then it would have no connection with form and emptiness. Thus. The causes and conditions of form and emptiness would be non-existent with regard to the eye consciousness. In the absence of emptiness and form, it would not be able to make distinctions. If there were no form and no emptiness, there would not be anything which was distinguished either. This is because you have no, you have to be facing form for a distinction to be made. Or if you are facing emptiness, a distinction can also be made. But what you propose here is that there isn't any form or any emptiness. Then what distinctions can be made? There isn't anything you can discriminate. So even if you had a consciousness, what use would it be? Just suppose you did have a consciousness. How could you see it? How could you use it? It would be useless. Sutra. Moreover, your sin is neither green, yellow, red, nor white. There is virtually nothing in which it is represented. Therefore, what is the realm established from? Commentary. Your sin means your vision. Your eyes see forms and are able to produce a consciousness. Your sin, which is capable of vision, is neither green, yellow, red, nor white. It is not of those colors. There is virtually nothing in which it is represented. Therefore, what is the realm established from? Where do you set up the realm? Sutra. Suppose it were produced because of form in emptiness, when there was no form, your consciousness would be extinguished. Then why is it that? The consciousness knows the nature of emptiness. Commentary: Suppose it were produced because of form. If you want to say, "Ah, the eye consciousness is produced because of the defiling objects of form in emptiness, when there was no form, your consciousness would be extinguished. When there were no forms in emptiness and there was nothing for you to discriminate, your consciousness would be extinguished." In the eye consciousness is based on form. When then, when there are no forms to see, your eye consciousness should disappear. Why is it that the consciousness knows the nature of emptiness? How then do you know that it is emptiness? Since you are able to know that it is the nature of emptiness, your consciousness has clearly not disappeared. You still have it. Therefore, it is not based on form. So, where does your consciousness come from? Sutra. Suppose a form changes. You are also conscious of the changing appearance, but your eye consciousness does not change. Where is the boundary established? Commentary. You say that it is because of form that the eye consciousness is produced. Suppose a form changes. You are also conscious of the changing appearance. You know that the appearance of the form is changing, but your eye consciousness does not change. But your eye consciousness hasn't changed. Where is the boundary established? If it were produced from the form, 
Jokinshus needs to change when the form changes, but it does not. So where is the realm of the consciousness established? If consciousness were produced from form, the realm would be established at the place of the form. But when the form changes, your consciousness does not trace off after the form and change along with it. Ultimately, where is the realm of your consciousness? Sutra, if the eye consciousness was to change when form changed, then there would be no appearance of a realm. If it were not to change, it would be constant. And given that it was produced from form, it should have no conscious knowledge of where there was emptiness. Commentary. If the eye consciousness were to change when form changed, the way it was stated above was that the eye consciousness does not change. If you say that it does change when it encounters changes in form, then there would be no appearance of the realm. Then there would be no realm. It would be constantly changing. If it were not to change, it would be constant. If it does not go along with the changes, it is there eternally. And given that it was produced from form, since it has been said that the consciousness is produced from form, it should have no conscious knowledge of where there was emptiness. If the consciousness were produced from something with characteristics and an appearance, it would not know where emptiness is, because its realm would lie within form, belonging with things that have a material nature. It would be a kind of consciousness which would not know of emptiness. Sutra, so, suppose the eye consciousness arose both from the eyes and from form, if they were united, there would still be a point of separation. If they were separate, there would still be a point of contact. Hence, the substance and nature would be chaotic and disorderly. How could the realm be set up? Commentary. Suppose the eye consciousness arose both from the eyes and from form. Suppose the organ of the eye matched with the defining objects of form and they produced it together. If they were united, there would still be a point of separation. If the two together produced the consciousness, then when the two were joined, there would certainly be a boundary between them because they would not be a single entity. You propose that the eye produces the eye consciousness and the defining objects of form also produce it. The defiling objects of form have no knowledge, while the eye organ has a knowing awareness. What the form produces will be without awareness. What the eye organ produces will have a knowing awareness. When something that has knowing awareness unites with something that lacks it, their dissimilarity means that there certainly will be a boundary between them. There will still be a point of separation. If they were separate, there would still be a point of contact. If they are separate, half is the sense organ and half is the defiling object. One half has knowing of an is, and the other half, the other half lacks it. It is a combination of two things. Hence, the substance of nature would be chaotic and disorderly. How could a realm be set up if it is explained this way? The substance and nature are scattered, and there can be no organization. Therefore, if in its basic substance, it cannot be distinguished clearly, how can this realm of consciousness exist? The realm cannot be established. Sutra. Therefore, you should know that as to the eyes and form being the conditions that produce the realm of eye consciousness, None of the three places exists, thus the three aspects of the eyes, form and the form realm, do not have their origin in causes and conditions, nor do their natures arise spontaneously. Commentary, therefore, you should know, because of this ananda, that as to the eyes and form being the conditions, the joining together of the eye organ and the defining objects of form that produce the realm of eye consciousness, 
none of the three places exist. If you pursue this doctrine in detail, you will see that none of the three places has a location. Thus, the three aspects of the eyes form in the form realm. The organ of the eye, the form dust, and the eye consciousness do not have the, their origin in causes and conditions, but their basis. They are not produced from causes and conditions, nor do their natures arise spontaneously. They are a representation of nature of true suchness, of the treasury of the first come one. Sutra. Moreover, Ananda, as you understand it, the ear and sound create the conditions that produce the ear consciousness. Commentary. Ananda, as you ordinarily conceive of it, as you understand it, the ear and sound create the conditions that produce the ear consciousness. The organ of the ear hears a different object of sound, and together they give rise to causes and conditions. The ear consciousness is then produced. With the ear comes the production of a nature which makes discriminations, which is the ear consciousness. Sutra. Is this consciousness produced because of the ear, such that the ear is its realm, or is it produced because of sound, such that sound is its realm? Commentary. Is this consciousness produced because of the ear, such that the ear is its realm? What do you say? Is this consciousness called the ear consciousness because it is produced by the ear, or is it produced because of sound? Such that sound is its realm, or is it produced because of sound taking the defiling objects of sound to make up its realm? What did you say its realm is? The Buddha challenges Ananda to understand his meaning, but Ananda doesn't have anything to say. The more the doctrine is explained, the more he feels he doesn't understand. So once again, he doesn't dare to speak. Shakyamuni Buddha continues, Sutra. Ananda, suppose the ear consciousness were produced because of the ear, the organ of hearing would have no awareness in the absence of both movement and stillness. Thus, nothing would be known by it. Since the organ would lack awareness, what would characterize the consciousness? Commentary Ananda, suppose the ear consciousness were produced because of the ear, Suppose you say that the ear consciousness was produced because of the ear, yet the two characteristics of movement and stillness must be present, perhaps one, perhaps the other. So the organ of hearing would have the awareness in the absence of both movement and stillness. When the characteristic of neither movement nor stillness appeared, the ear by itself would not be aware of anything. By itself, it would have no knowing awareness. Thus, nothing would be known by it. The ear definitely would not know of the existence of the defiling objects of sound. If the two characteristics of movement and stillness did not exist, there would be no sound. And without any sound, obviously nothing would be known, since the organ would lack awareness, since it would not be able to know what would characterize the consciousness? Where would your consciousness come from? What would the consciousness be like? This consciousness does not exist either. Sutra, you may hold that the ears hear, but when there is no movement and stillness, hearing cannot occur. How then could the ears, which are but physical forms, unite with external objects to be called the realm of consciousness? Once again, therefore, how would the realm of consciousness be established? Commentary, you may hold that the ears hear. Suppose you say that the ear consciousness is not produced because of the ear, but rather that the ear has a nature of hearing and that, therefore, the consciousness is produced from within the nature of hearing. But when there is no movement and stillness, hearing cannot occur. There is there isn't any sound of movement or of stillness, then you don't hear anything. Since you do not hear anything, hearing is not accomplished. You cannot call it hearing. How then could the ears 
which are but physical forms, unite with external objects to be called the realm of consciousness. You can consider the ear to be among the defining objects of form, and so how can they combine with external objects, which are also form, to produce a realm? This cannot be. Once again, therefore, how would the realm of consciousness be established, and where ultimately would the realm of the ear consciousness come from? Would it be established with the ear or with the defiling objects of sound? It certainly should come from one or the other. Which one? Sutra. Suppose it was produced from sound. If the consciousness existed because of sound, then it would have no connection with hearing. Without hearing, then the characteristic of sound would have no vocation. Commentary. Suppose you were to say that the realm of the ear consciousness was produced from sound. If the consciousness existed because of sound, if the sound brings about the realm of the ear consciousness, then it would have no connection with hearing. Without hearing, then the characteristic of sound would have no location. If there isn't any hearing, then there isn't any sound, and without sound, the consciousness would be absent. When the nature of hearing is gone, the characteristic of sound is gone too. Without any hearing, how can there be a consciousness, a hearing nature? Sutra. Suppose consciousness existed because of sound, even that sound exists because of hearing, which causes the characteristic of sound to manifest. Then you should also hear the hearing consciousness. Commentary. Suppose consciousness existed because of sound. Suppose that the consciousness is produced from sound. Perhaps you want to say that the ear consciousness arises from sound, given that sound exists because of hearing. Which causes the characteristic of sound to manifest. You can say that sound exists because of the hearing nature. That is how the characteristic of sound arises. But if that is the case, then you should also hear the hearing consciousness. The hearer should hear what his own consciousness sounds like. To say that the consciousness is produced from sound, that without any sound there wouldn't be any consciousness. Then, because you you hear sound, you should also hear the consciousness. So try if the hearing consciousness is not heard, there is no realm. If it is heard, then it is the same as sound. If the consciousness itself is heard, who is it that perceives the hears and hears the consciousness? If there is no perceiver, then in the end you would be like grass or wood. Commentary: If the hearing consciousness is not heard. There is no realm. If it is not heard, there is no realm. If the consciousness is produced because of sound, then there can be the consciousness when there is sound. When there is no sound, there isn't any consciousness. When you hear the sound, you should hear the consciousness. And by the same token, when the consciousness is not heard, there will be no realm. If it is heard, then it is the same as sound. What is heard is sound. What you can hear cannot be called a consciousness. It is a sound. If the consciousness itself is heard, who is it that perceives and hears the consciousness? The hearing consciousness has the ability to know, but if the hearing consciousness has already been heard, whose consciousness heard it? Someone else. Whose consciousness perceived the consciousness? Who is it? Who knew? Oh, now I'm hearing the consciousness. If there is no perceiver, if you say no one perceives it, there is no other consciousness which knows the circumstances of the hearing consciousness. Then, in the end, you would be like grass or wood. If the hearing lacked perception, then you would be like grass and trees. So this proposition will not stand. Sutra. Nor is it likely that sound and hearing mix together to form a realm in between, since the realm in between could not be established. How could the internal and external characteristics be delineated? Commentary: Nor is it likely that the sound and hearing mix together to form a realm in between, 
Nor can you say that sound and the hearing of sound mixed together haphazardly, without their being distinguished at all clearly. In that way, the boundaries of the realm would be unclear, because things incongruous cannot be clearly marked to form an intermediate realm. Since a realm in between could not be established, thus, if there is no clear indication of the position of the realm, how could the internal and external characteristics be delineated? The inside, outside, and middle of the ear consciousness realm are not delineated. The boundaries between the ear, the sound, and the point between them are not established anywhere, so the consciousness can have no realm. Sutra. Therefore, you should know that as to the ear and sound curating the conditions which produces the which produce the realm of the ear consciousness, none of the three places exist. Thus, the three aspects of the ear, sound, and sound consciousness do not have their origin in causes and conditions, nor do their natures arise spontaneously. Commentary. Therefore, because of this, you should know, Ananda, that as to the ear and sound creating the conditions, the mutual causes and conditions of the ear and sound which produce the realm of the ear consciousness, none of the three places exist. The realm of the ear consciousness, the realm of the ear organ, and the realm of the defining objects of sound are all non-existent. They have no fixed location. Thus, the three aspects of the ear, sound, and sound consciousness, the realms of the ear organ, of the defining objects of sound, and of the consciousness of the existence of sound, these three realms do not have their, their origin in causes and conditions, nor do their natures arise spontaneously. They, too, are nothing but representations from the wonderful nature of true suchness of the treasury of the first come one.